had a stroke. I'm not gonna do that! Me, Mr. Tuggle. <laughs> How to be ignorant of faster if you knew the gothic slender man. I'm bisexual. I'm okay! The slender man turned you human, didn't he? Terror. Ten dollars. Because I love the taste of adventure! <laughs> <laughs> Paris Torture Trial! Ten-year anniversaries are always special. It's the moment where any project, whether that be TV show, movie, video game, anime, cartoon, book, or even YouTube channel, have stood the test of time long enough to make it to the double digits. Just think of all the things that became ten years old in 2018 alone. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Star Wars The Clone Wars, The Day Barack Obama Was Elected the U.S. President, Cloverfield, Grand Theft Auto 4, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, Fallout 3, Ben 10 Alien Force, Spice and Wolf, Spore, Twilight, Mario Kart Wii, Wally, Dead Space, Mirror's Edge, Kung Fu Panda, Left 4 Dead, Little Big Planet, The Spectacular Spider-Man, Black Butler, Braid, The Start of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Iron Man, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, Silent Hill Homecoming, The Dark Knight, Clan Night After Story, Sonic Unleashed, The Secret Saturdays, Soul Calibur 4. Stop! Ahem. <clears throat> what Tug is trying to say is that 10 years is a long time to be doing what we're doing. We may not be the biggest channel, but that doesn't make our 10 years count any less than others. Blake's right. For 10 years, Zachary Lowry has been making all sorts of content for YouTube. And while he may not have a huge audience like Shane Thompson, Mr. Creepypasta, or PewDiePie, he is still happy that he was able to do this for so long. So to celebrate, and to show you, one of his like, 10 fans, and new viewers where it all started, I'm Tug the Penguin, formerly known as Mr. Tuggles. And I'm Blake the Pair of Bisexual Boxers, formerly known as just Bisexual Boxers. And I'm Jack the Terror Skull, formerly known as Terror, though you can still refer to me as Terror if you like. And today, we're going to Pennsylvania, to Washington State, back to Pennsylvania, and over to Texas, as we take a look back at the Jet Ray era. So, good question, but how did Zack get into making videos and YouTube to begin with? Yeah, it's a good place to start. When I was a young kid, I wasn't really that much of a social person. I was very socially awkward, nervous, and anxious. Uh, I never really had a lot of friends because of that, and I couldn't really get along with others. So I was the target for bullying a lot, and a lot of the time, whenever I'd ask for help, you know the whole thing where teachers say, oh, if someone's bullying you, tell someone, I typically would get blamed for the bullying, and almost nothing would go through. So typically I'd be by myself just making stuff, it was my only real way to escape from uh, the constant harassment that I had to deal with. When I was younger I did sort of a Chris Chan where I made comics based on the bullies I don't like, and I made my own superhero alter ego called Ultra Z, and eventually started making videos, but not on YouTube, on my grandmother's camera. This was around, I'd say, 2004 to 2006 when we first moved to Pennsylvania. My grandmother would mainly use this camera for vacations and I guess she was kind of annoyed that I was mm, quote unquote borrowing it so much. So she got me my own camera for Christmas and I can't remember whether or not uh, what year this was. I think it may have been 2006, maybe seven. It was the year the Polar Express came out. I know that because during that same Christmas, my sister actually got a laptop that came with the Polar Express. And I was kind of jealous a little bit, but I was still happy I got a camera of my own. I still use many of the tapes my grandmother had. Yes, it wasn't a digital camera, it was a video camera that used a sort of cassette tape sized VCR tapes that you could put into an empty VCR and watch it on a TV. We don't have any of those anymore and I would show you examples for something I'll go over later. Early 2008 or somewhere around late 2007, I'm not too sure, 
My sister would be getting on YouTube, and she would often invite me into her room to watch YouTube videos with her. These were typically things like Salad Fingers and Charlie the Unicorn and oh my god, shows. And at that point in time, I was in a phase where I wanted to be like my sister, so I went on YouTube as well and discovered my own stuff that I would like, like Smosh and Food Battle, uh, Make Me Bad 35, Fred, uh, Ed's World, and a bunch of Family Guy clips. And eventually, I discovered that I could make videos and upload them on here. Now, I didn't understand that much about the internet, I didn't know that much about emails at that point in time, so I tried to open a channel, and I made up an email thinking it was just something you had to make up. Uh, it was called Stink Frog, and I think it had a bunch of numbers at the end, and I couldn't use it because I had no email to verify uh, the account, so I had to use my mom's email to make another account. This would become my very first YouTube channel. As for the name, I was obsessed with Ben 10. It was my favorite cartoon on Cartoon Network, and Alien Force was just around the corner. In fact, they were doing this thing where certain codes would come on commercials and you could input them on a website like either the Cartoon Network website or a website specifically for Alien Force and you'd be able to unlock different aliens to look at. My favorite design was Goop, but even as a kid I realized Goop wouldn't be the good basis of a name, so instead I chose Jet Ray, he was my second favorite. As for the numbers, I loved how 101 was always representing knowledge. And I also was watching Zoe 101 at the time, a famous Nickelodeon series by Dan Schneider. So I decided, how about I just go ahead and raise that one to 102, and that's where Jet Ray 102 came in. Most usernames at that point in time had numbers, we couldn't have spaces, we couldn't put real names in there. I mean, we could, but you couldn't like put spaces in between, so uh, it had to be like some kind of a Bob underscore uh, Jenkinson. Uh, underscore 64, I don't know, something along those lines. I will say this though, I made one stupid move and that was the upload button. You see, for some reason my kid mind, like I said, I was 12, I didn't understand YouTube, I thought the upload button meant take someone else's content. I don't know why, but I thought that's how it was, so I decided not to use the upload button and I tried to find another way to upload videos, and I found this site called One True Media, which I don't think is up anymore. Essentially, Wontra Media was kind of like Mediafire, where you can upload files, but it also gave you the chance to put it into a form of a montage and upload it straight to your YouTube channel. And that's what I did at first, hence why most of my first videos had this intro that Wontra Media always forced you to have. My first videos on YouTube were clip shows, essentially, of like, uh, top 10 favorite cartoons or top 10 uh, characters I want in Super Smash Bros. Brawl 2 because I didn't know there were other games before Brawl, despite the fact I did play the original Smash Bros. years ago. <laughs> and yes, at that point in time, I made a video called Characters I Want in Super Smash Bros. Brawl 2, and I put the goddamn Chihuahua from Beverly Hills Chihuahua. I am not even kidding. <laughs> and it's kind of funny how things all come together, because I still do topless to this day, just arguably a lot better. Eventually, I figured out how to upload videos into my computer and edit them on Windows Movie Maker 2.6, which is what everyone used around 2008. Most people didn't use other software because it was way too expensive, and most of us just used either Windows Movie Maker or some other cheap thing. And most of these were more just montages than anything else of me and my sister just goofing off. Shadow, we need a pickle and a pickle and a pickle and a pickle. Okay, that's it. Chaos. Control! And that's where things got started. A stupid 12 year old who had no idea what he was doing or had no idea how to use the internet nor YouTube saw some videos on the internet and if they were uploaded today, he'd surely become a meme and be shoved in every cringe compilation known to man. Thank god this was 2008 and people understood that shouting cringe wasn't constructive criticism. 2009 rolled up and that's when his, let's say, creative desires came into play.